Okay, so, last time um, we wrote down the following integral which was at one loop. So, for one loop integral we had defined this integral i d and m. So, d is the number of dimensions n is the number of propagators and I will show you what m is and this was in Euclidean space right after the Wick rotation. Okay, and if you remember we had dropped the i epsilon because it is not needed be, uh, as we are working in the Euclidean space, but if you go back and search it would be um, it would be a plus i epsilon. Okay, if you keep it then it will be plus i epsilon. Okay. It is not really needed here, but it will be useful when we continue back to the to the Minkowski space okay, that is why I have kept it back but as far as this integral it is not needed. We can also recall that uh, L naught was i times L Euclidean. In fact, it was n okay, that is the nth component. So, 0th component in the Minkowski space we call it the nth component of the vector L Euclidean. Okay, and the remaining uh, special components here they are identical. So, L e the special components of Euclidean vector L they are same on the both sides. Okay, I should be writing k not L. these are the special components. Okay, um, also, we uh, because of this factor of phi, I, when I am doing one loop integrals, I am always going to get a factor of phi. Okay. So, the original integral which is in Minkowski space that will lead to this integral together with the factor of phi. So, let me include that here. Okay, and we have seen that the result is this. So, this i is here and we evaluated this last time and we found that it is minus 1 to the n, where n is the number of propagators. m square depends on the external momenta. Okay, let me just write m square. I will then explicitly write the arguments times okay, that was the result. Now, when you are doing these Feynman integrals you would want the result in the Minkowski space directly. So, what I am going to do now is continue this result to the Minkowski space by rotating back to theta equal to 0. Uh, you remember what that theta is. Where did that go? So, somewhere here I am not finding it. Um, let us check. We had written an expression with e to the uh, 2 i theta. We had multiplied these uh, the time components with e to the i theta and um, let us see if I can find.
here. This is the denominator that we had at the time after week rotation. Um, this is for arbitrary theta, but if you um, rotate by 90 degrees, you get the week rotated integral. So, I am going to put theta equal to 0 again. Okay? That is what I am doing. So, I am going back to the uh, original integral. Okay. So, rotate back to theta equal to 0. So, what will happen? I d d k Euclidean, okay, there is only one factor of i because only one of the components was a uh, time component okay, of the of the d components. So, that goes back to d d k. Okay, this is Minkowski on the right hand side. What happens to the denominator here in the integrand? So, minus k e square minus m square plus i epsilon okay, power n that goes to what? That is what we should determine and that is easy minus k e square okay, is minus k Euclidean n square okay, that is the nth component and then you have minus k Euclidean um, square okay, that is the vector. So, when you use this you get that um, minus k e square this becomes um, k e n that has a i k 0 i square is minus 1. So, that kills this minus 1 and it gives you k 0 square minus k vector square and this is k square. Okay. And um, so, as far as this is concerned I know that minus k e square should be replaced by k square okay, when I rotate back how about minus m square. So, let us look at minus m square plus i epsilon and remember what is m square. m square is a function of p i dot p j these are Euclidean and m squares and also depend on x size okay, these Feynman parameters. So, uh, let me write down minus m square p i dot p j m square depends on these uh, these objects okay, plus i epsilon that will go to what? It will go to minus m square. So, p i dot p j will be p i n p j n this is still Euclidean. Okay. So, I will put Euclidean here, these are the nth components and then the other components. Okay. Now, when you rotate as we saw just now this will become minus um, p i 0 p j 0. Okay. So, this upon rotation will give you minus p i dot p j. Okay, I pulled out a minus sign. Now, this is in uh, Minkowski, Minkowski space. So, minus m square of minus p i dot p j m square x i plus i epsilon. Okay, earlier, I was writing m square because uh, m square was positive definite. So, it made sense to write m square using the square as a symbol to remind that that is a positive object. But now, once you have gone to Minkowski space this m square with these arguments is not necessarily positive definite. Okay. 
So, I will change, I will redefine it to make a, a better symbol. So, I will define this as um, th this I will define as minus delta. Okay. So, what is delta? Delta is the continued version of m square to theta equal to 0. Okay. Whatever the functional form of m square is that is what I am calling delta. Okay. So, minus m square plus i epsilon after we uh, rotating back it gives you minus delta plus i epsilon. Okay, and what is delta? Delta is same same function m square continued to Minkowski space. Okay, so, what do we get then? The integral becomes or better still um, here um, this one. So, when I look at this, this after continuation this has become the following. Uh, and there is a factor of um, i that will come from here. Okay. So, this i will be gone because i d d k e goes to d d k. So, you get the integral on the left hand side of so this is this is the left hand side and this is this result i am calling right hand side okay so uh, what how do i get rid of this so you get integral d d k over 2 pi to the d um, 1 over k square minus delta plus i epsilon to the n. Okay. This is after continuing that integral. So, now I can take the result that I had the specific result here okay, this one and also continue it and see what I get. So, all I have to do is take this m square and continue it and I already know what m square becomes m square is what I call delta. Okay. Uh, just replace uh, wherever in m square you have these uh, these uh, these things and continue it to complex uh, continue it to the the Minkowski space. So, this will be the replacement and here I will get the same everything will be same except m square will be replaced by delta. So, you get um, i times minus 1 power n 1 over 4 pi d over 2 gamma n minus d over 2 over gamma n times 1 over delta minus i epsilon. Okay. You will see that you get a minus i epsilon okay, because I am pulling out that minus sign. Yeah. So, here uh, I will just explain why there is minus epsilon. So, here you see the uh, this is minus m square. So, whatever is in front of this minus is what enters here. Okay. If you keep that i epsilon also then it will be minus of m square minus i epsilon. So, here m square minus i epsilon and it is this minus uh, uh, m square minus i epsilon which has become delta minus i epsilon. Okay. So, this is the result I wish I had written it more nicely um, which I think I should do. Okay, let me write it again. So, so we have shown that So, the result in Minkowski 
space is d d k over 2 pi to the d. Okay, I am going to use this result again and that is why I want to write it nicely k square minus delta plus i epsilon power n where delta function depends on all those variables which I listed i minus 1 to the n over 4 pi d over 2 gamma n minus d over 2 over gamma n times epsilon n minus d over 2. Okay, so good you can directly use these results when you are doing Feynman integral instead of first going to Euclidean space and then doing continuation because that is exactly what is done here. Now, I will also uh, give you another result which will be useful. which is the following. Um, so, I want to evaluate now a different integral one over k square plus two p dot k minus delta minus plus i epsilon to the n. Okay, what is uh, what is the result for this and it is very easy to do, but before I uh, show you uh, what the result is actually I should not even show you, you should do it yourself, but look here the delta contains the dot products ok delta is a scalar. Um, so, it contains the dot products of all the external momenta. Now, here p is some momentum in the problem and external momentum in the problem or even a linear combination of them and the p is sitting here. Okay. Now, this integral if you see this is a Lorentz invariant integral. Okay. Um, now, the result can only depend on p because k is anyway dummy right you this is integrated over. So, result can only depend on on p and the only function that you can construct given only one uh, momentum which is a scalar is p square. Okay. So, whatever I do the result of this will be a function of p square. So, uh, I leave it as an exercise to just do the change of variables okay, by first you complete the square and then do a change of variable and write it as the following. So, this will become d d l over 2 pi to the d. Okay, I am just giving you the result of what will happen after uh, completing the square and changing variables. Okay, this you should check. Okay, now, you already see that uh, after doing those steps p square has appeared in here. Now, instead of having 2 p dot k you have p square plus delta. Okay. So, clearly when I integrate the result will depend on p square and delta and this is equal to um, let me try doing it pulling it out. this is equal to. Um, so, uh, this is a result you already know right we had on the previous page think of this as delta prime okay, and then use that result and you get i minus 1 to the n over 4 pi d over 2 gamma n minus d over 2 over gamma n 
and you have 1 over p square plus delta minus i epsilon and minus d over 2 okay, that is the result. So, you have um, these two important results. Now, uh, when you are doing quantum electrodynamics okay, or, or theories which have spin, then you can get um, powers of k in the numerator also. Okay, even though we are not doing it in this course, but let me still record that uh, result. So, for those of you who have already um, seen, I mean, some uh, are, are familiar to some extent with quantum electrodynamics, will know that you have uh, when you are looking at the propagator, you get one over. What happened? you get 1 over k slash minus m, where k slash is just k mu gamma mu. Okay. And when you write the propagator with uh, k square minus m square in the denominator, then you get things like uh, k slash in the numerator, okay, which is just k mu gamma mu. So, you will have integrals which will involve k mu in the numerator. Okay. So, let us look at one of those. So, I want to integrate d d k over 2 pi to the d k, k mu over k square plus 2 p dot k minus delta plus epsilon. Okay. What will be the result? So, before I give you the result, let us see what it will look like at least the p dependence. So, again using the same argument the result will depend on delta, okay, delta is a scalar, it is made out of all the invariants and m squares and uh, whatever and x i's. Now, this integral carries an index mu, okay, that is a Lorentz index mu. So, whatever you get after the integral should also carry that index mu, right? because it is a Lorentz index this object transforms like a 4 vector or like a d vector in because we are in d dimensions. Um, so, it, it should carry that index mu. Now, there is only one object that can carry that index mu. Okay, since k is dummy, it will not appear and you will have p. So, result should be proportional to p mu, p mu times something. Okay. So, it should be proportional to p mu that much we can say and now let us figure out what it is. So, the trick is let us call it i let me put an index mu. Okay. Let me take a derivative of um, this integral with respect to p mu. So, I evaluate del over del p mu, where mu is the lower index now okay, of this integral of not this integral, but without k mu. Okay. So, let us evaluate Okay, um, so, this integral what I have here in this line, this we already know and right? we have seen here, here we have already evaluated this one. So, that is known I can take a derivative with respect to p mu. So, I, I take the expression and take the derivative. So, I can uh, do that easily, but now let us see what it generates when I do this integral. Okay. So, this will give you integral d d k over 2 pi to the d um, 
So, this is basically this will give you minus n over k square plus 2 p dot k minus delta plus i epsilon power n plus 1 into 2 um, k mu. Okay. Differentiating this will give you 2 k mu. So, that is what you get. Um, now, I will just because I want to evaluate this integral with n and what I have gotten is almost the same integral other than some constants, but with the power n plus 1. So, I will just change n to n minus 1 in this expression. Okay. So, what I get is so change let n go to n minus 1. So, I get integral d d k over 2 pi to the d k mu over k square plus 2 p dot k minus delta plus i epsilon power n. This is what we want to evaluate okay. this object okay. and this is um, we divide by 2 1 over 2 this n I am changing n to minus n minus 1. So, this will become 1 over minus n plus 1. Okay. That is fine. Then you have a derivative of um, with respect to p mu of the result of after integration which is i times minus 1 power n minus 1. So, what I am doing is I am taking this result and putting n equal to n minus 1 okay. that is what I am doing n minus 1 1 over four pi d over 2 gamma n minus 1 minus d over 2 over gamma n minus 1 times 1 over p square plus delta minus i epsilon power n minus 1 minus d over 2. Okay, and um, if you use z gamma z equal to gamma z plus 1. So, here you have gamma n minus 1 this is minus of n minus 1. So, n minus 1 times gamma n minus 1 will give you gamma n. Okay. So, use that and um, this will give you finally, p mu taking a derivative from this thing it will give you so, the final result I am writing you can check minus p mu um, yeah, minus p mu. So, as I said the result will be proportional to b p mu. So, that is what we have got times i minus 1 power n over 4 pi d over 2 gamma n minus d over 2 over gamma n 1 over p square plus delta minus i epsilon okay, n minus d over 2 that is what you get. So, what you have here in the square brackets is exactly what we had here, okay, it is identical. So, the result is this is the explicit result, but if I were to um, if I were to relate the two results, then it is the following. So, integral d d k over 2 pi d k mu over 
k square plus 2 p dot k minus delta plus epsilon power n is equal to p minus p mu times the integral without k mu okay the scalar integral d d k over 2 pi d okay these are very useful results we should we should keep them safe okay so this is nice we have several uh, what happened okay there is an extra page here I will delete it later. Okay, now, that we are doing these integrals, I will also show you uh, give another um, result to you. So, you will also encounter integrals of this kind when you are doing loop integrals. d d k over 2 pi d k mu k nu. So, you may have 2 factors of k in the numerator and then the same denominator. Okay, so, let us see uh, even without even before doing any explicit calculation what the result would look like as far as it is mu nu dependence is concerned. Okay. So, this integral is a rank 2 integral, I mean it, 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 it the result should be a rank 2 tensor because you have two indices mu and nu, okay. but that uh, those indices cannot depend on I mean uh, k is uh, dummy. So, those indices can only appear in appear on p right? that is the only vector you have here there is nothing else that you have. And the dependence should be such that the uh, integral that you get, the, the the tensor that you get, is symmetric. See, this is a if you interchange mu with nu and nu with mu, integral doesn't change, right? Because k nu k mu is same as k mu k nu. These are numbers, right? K zero, k one, some number, k one, k zero, same number, okay? So, you can interchange. So, the result should be should be a rank to a symmetric rank to tensor. Okay? That is one thing I know from, from here. Now, what are all possible rank to tensors available to us when we are doing this integral? So, given that the result can depend on p, we have this rank 2 tensor available to us which is symmetric under interchange of mu and nu. There is another rank 2 tensor which is always available which is g mu nu or, or better I should call it eta mu nu, but let me call it g mu nu. Okay. So, that is um, your metric tensor which is always available. So, whatever this result is it has to be some constant which I will call a times p mu p nu plus some constant b and that constant b will depend on uh, delta and, and ap, all, all those other variables ok n d all those things. But the general form has to be this. Okay. So, I will leave it as an exercise to to find out the explicit answer using these kind of tricks. What has happened here? Yeah. Why did I jump to the next page? Okay, anyway. So, please uh, do this. Um, you know the trick of differentiating and you can try to figure this out. I will instead of um, giving the answer for this one, I will do a simpler version. Okay, this you figure out. Exercise find a and b. So, now what I will do is I will put p equal to 0, so that I can evaluate this integral in a slightly simpler setting. Okay, so, p is gone. So, of course, the result will not depend on uh, this factor because p is 0 now. So, let us look at this integral d d k over 2 pi d k mu k nu over 
k square plus 2 p dot k sorry k square minus delta plus i epsilon power n. Okay. So, I already know that this result should be proportional to g mu nu because that is the only thing that will be left now. But there is another thing that you see is that if I contract this with g mu nu, okay, this g mu nu times k mu k nu is k square. Okay. So, this integral becomes d d k over 2 pi d k square over this vector. Okay. Now, let me write it this way. So, it is g mu nu, I claim that this can be written as the following. Let us see whether the claim is correct. Okay. G mu nu is fine that I have already uh, convinced you, but this integral is some function of it is some constant right. It involves all these deltas and d's and uh, n's, but some constant. So, it is consistent with whatever I said earlier that the result should be proportional to g mu nu, but whether it should be k square here and um, whether the integrand is correct or not let us check. So, if I contract on both sides with g mu nu left hand side will give you k square over this. If I contract with g mu nu this g mu nu times the other g mu nu will give you some constant and then exactly here k square as you had here. So, it is clear that the, the form of the integral is correct that I should get g mu nu times this kind of an integral, but what is not necessarily correct is the uh, some constant which could appear here, okay? some number which could appear here. So, let us find out that contracted on contracting on both sides with g mu nu it will produce k square here and here it will you already have k square, but g mu nu g mu nu will be will be what is delta mu mu okay, which is if if you were in integral number of dimensions um, 4, 5, 6, 10 whatever 20, 100 then this will be just 1 plus 1 th those many times right. So, if d is integer then this is just d and even when d is not integral okay, it is consistent to uh, define g mu nu g mu nu to be equal to d. Okay. So, I will not go in more details about um, uh, these issues of dimensional regularization, but uh, it is consistent to define g mu nu g mu nu to be d and the other things related to um, um, uh, when you have spinner fields, but that is not what is bothering us in this lecture. But if you are interested, you should um, look at the book by John Collins okay, on renormalization. So, anyway, now let us fix the factor of c. So, when I multiply g mu both sides, it will give you d. So, clearly c should be 1 over d, that is what I should use. Okay. So, I will remove that c and put a 1 over d. Let me write that result also. This is um, I want to Okay, so, now here, so what I have shown you is integral d d k over 2 pi d um, k mu k nu over k 
square minus delta plus i epsilon to the n is equal to 1 over d g mu nu sorry indices should be up because on the left hand side you have the indices up d d k over 2 pi d k square over k square minus delta plus i epsilon power n. Okay, so, these are some useful integrals that you will encounter when you are doing loop integrals okay, and I will um, I will stop here hmm, there is one more thing I wanted to tell which I forgot. Yeah. This is something I should have told you much earlier. Um, yeah, here after this. So I'll add a slide here. Okay. So yeah, here we had looked at uh, the volume integral and we found explicit, explicit expression, but I will also tell you how to parameterize. Okay. Um, so, we had d d or I, I think at that time I was using n d n k e n dimensions. Okay. This is d k Euclidean 1, d k Euclidean 2 and so forth d k Euclidean n okay so these are this is n dimensional okay so you have n n variables k e1 k e2 so forth up to k e n okay and we want to use spherical coordinates okay because most of these integrals have uh, no dependence on angle they only care about the magnitude of k e okay they involve things like this so, um, if you look at k e 1 square k e 2 square up to k e n square, okay, then that is a constant. So, r I will or, or maybe small r r squares. Okay. So, if, if you have spherical symmetry then we will use this radial coordinate okay, and the sum of these squares will be equal to the radius square. Now, there are total of n variables one of the variables I can choose as r. So, I am going to do a change of variables from this set. to another set of which one of them is r and I and I claim that I can introduce n minus 1 angle angular variables ok that is a that is something I can do. You can parameterize differently also, but one of the parameterization is that you have one length in the problem one coordinate which has dimensions of length in the problem and all others are dimensionless. Okay. But this is not the only way you can do different parameterizations where maybe two of them has dimensions of length and others have dimensions of uh, others are dimensionless like angles. Okay. But this is one of them which is allowed and let me uh, give an explicit expression which um, which tells you that you can make such a choice. Okay. So, here is the explicit result. So, k e 1 r cos theta 1. Okay. k e 2 is r sin theta 1 cos theta 2.
Okay, I, let me. Even though I'm going to write exactly the same thing, I want to write it in a different order. It will be useful. So k e n the nth component I will parameterize as r sin theta one sin theta two so forth sin theta n minus three sin theta n minus two sin theta n minus one. Okay, so if sin theta one, sin theta two, and so forth up to here. Then k e n minus one. I'm parameterizing as r sin theta one, sin theta two, and so forth. Sin theta n minus three, sin theta n minus two. Cos theta n minus one. Okay, I will soon tell you why I have done it this way. K e n minus two, the n minus two th component. I will parameterize as sine theta one, sine theta n minus three, sine sorry, cos theta n minus two. Okay, and you continue like this. Then you have x three is equal to r sine theta one. And then sine theta two, then cos theta three. Sorry, not x three. K e three. Okay, and k e two is equal to r sine theta one cos theta two, and k e one is equal to r cos theta one. Okay, and let's see whether this is a A parameterization that's going to work, okay? And I want to have this. So if I sum the squares, I should get r square, a constant, okay? And that would mean that I'm using a spherical coordinate system. So let's take k e n and square it, and take k e n minus one and square it and add the two. So I'm adding this one and the previous one, okay? So you'll have r square sine square theta one. Squares of all these plus, uh, times cos square theta n minus one, and here k e n when you square, you get exactly the same factors. R square you got here, here also you get r square sine square theta one, sine square theta one, sine square th up to sine square theta n minus two, sine square theta n minus two. But here you had cos square theta n minus one, and this one has sine square theta n minus one. So when you add the two, the squares of These factors in both, they are common. Okay, so you can pull them out, and you are left with cos square theta n minus one, cos square sine square theta n minus one. That adds up to one, right? Cos square theta plus sine square theta is one. So what you are left with is uh, k e n minus one square plus k e n square will will be just r square sine square theta one up to Sine square theta n minus two. Now you add that with k e n minus two square. Okay. So when you do that, you see that again the same factors. Here you r square, here is r square. Here you get sine square theta one, sine square theta one, up to sine square theta n minus three, sine square theta n minus three. So that in the sum you can factor this out, and you will be left with cos square theta n minus two, sine square theta n minus two, and adding these two makes one. So you see, every time you are adding a square of the previous uh, uh, coordinate, the last angle is dropping out. Okay. So if you continue this way, you will eventually arrive here at at this stage. You will arrive at when you have added the sum of all these squares up to k e two squared. You will have r square sine square theta. Okay, that cos square theta two would have already uh, been. Taken care of by by this sine square theta two. Okay, so at the end you will be left with from this from this I mean this plus all the remaining will give you r square sine square theta and k e one square is r square cos square theta one. Summing the two will give you r square and thus we get this one. 
So, this is uh, the parameterization in n dimensions when you are looking at spherical coordinate system. Okay, that is something I uh, wanted to tell you which I had missed. Okay, good then. So, we have done uh, uh, most of the integrals that are usually required and uh, now I can start discussing more about renormalization and getting rid of infinities. See you in the next video.